God. Praise God. I often tell our church family at home, you ought to be able to go to heaven from your last service. And I realize they have already said tomorrow night's going to be a bigger crowd and Friday night's going to be a big crowd. Let me tell you something. Everybody that is anybody's here. Because there may not be a Thursday night and there may not be a Friday night. Hey, we better do something now. Well, you don't know like I know. Woo! Oh, glory. Honored to be with you. Honored to be with my good friend, Brother Bernard, who I have said all over Pentecost is just an extremely baptized brain. He has proven to me that God can use brains. While this world puts a premium on ignorance, God doesn't. Learn everything you can. Get as smart as you can. Do everything you can. Everybody doesn't need to flip hamburgers. Somebody needs to eat them. Thank you very, very much for letting me come to your fine district. And uh, I'd like to make a statement before I make a statement. There are some people in the world that I think are just dumb and stupid and not worth listening to. There are some people that I don't think could tell the truth standing on the Bible looking at Jesus. There's a guy named Mark Twain. I'm not, on, I'm not impressed with him. He's quite famous for his writings and his belligerence. But he did, even in his ignorance, make a great statement. And I want to share it with you before I start. Mark Twain said, Stay clear of people who try to belittle your ambitions. You didn't, you didn't hear me. He said, Small people are always trying to do that. And great people are always trying to inspire you to be great. Oh, I like that. I'm not going to waste my time hanging around some dingbat. You can forget that. I don't even go to a general conference and sit next to somebody. If they don't start worshiping, I just put my finger up and I move. I'm not interested in the World Series, the NBA, or the... I'm not interested who won the Super Bowl. I didn't say I'm against it. I'm just not interested. I get ready to go to church. I've been fighting hell and chaos and devils and trouble all week long. I don't need to sit next to some idiot that wants to pull up his socks and... You, you better look at someone and say, if they're not worshiping, you need to move. Oh, hallelujah! <laughs> Praise God. The only thing this... I was back in the Air Force in 1962 when I was in your fair city. That's 43 years ago. If I had stayed in, I'd be retired and have lots of money. I'm still working and all I have is a sore throat. <laughs> hallelujah. But I'm just glad to be with you. Thank you for letting me come, and I'm sincere. And I have a lot of good friends. I saw, I thought I saw Brother and Sister Leon Suggett, my dear old friends from years gone by. Thank you for coming to hear me, and Brother Chance, and Brother Gurley, and different ones that have been kind to me over the years. Honored to be with you. I'd like to, I'd like to set the stage tonight if there happens to be a tomorrow. Fair enough? I'd like to expand the horizons of your mind tonight. Now, now I know you're the baptized brain, but just, just act like I'm telling the truth. You can correct it later. But, 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 but I, but I want to really challenge this. I, I only have a few days left. I'm pushing 61. I know I look like I'm 25, but I'm pushing 61. And uh, Elvis is dead, and I'm standing in for him. Hallelujah. So I'd like to direct your attention to just a few portions of Scripture, Old Testament, to start off. I'd like to, to just go to Job 32, and verse 8, and then Job 33, verse 4, and then we'll move along just a little bit. Okay? 
I'd like to challenge you. Fair enough? I want to challenge you. Expand your mind. Don't, don't settle that, you know, whatever you've had and what you've become is you're at the climax. That's crazy. You, you just had your initial experience with God. He's got stuff coming down the pike that will blow your socks off. And if you don't open your spirit and your mind, you know, you can't be built up if you don't open up. And we just got to open up. We got to get out of this, excuse me, this Pentecostal stupid stuff where we're just afraid of everybody and protect our image. Let me tell you something. Your image and 50 cents will buy coffee. And the people that you're worried about, their opinion, their opinion will change in three weeks. The worst altar you can ever worship at is the altar of somebody else's opinion. Well, what is he going to say? Well, what is she going to say? Who gives a flip what they're going to say? They don't fight your devils. They don't pray your prayers. They don't cry your tears. They don't fast your meals. What do you care what they say? Come on, let's let's get to the word of the Lord. It's it's one. I got 9:35. It's 8:35. Okay, I'll I'll go as fast as I can. You ready? I'm reading from Job 33 and 8. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Now, now I've got a sermon I'll just give to you real quick that simply says you can't afford to have a bad service because it's the only, it's not it's not knowledge it's the inspiration of the almighty that gives you understanding knowledge just fills your head with stuff the inspir uh, the inspiration of the almighty giveth understanding let's go further 33 and 4 of job the spirit of god has made me and the breath of the almighty has given me life that's enough to take two laps Look at someone and say, according to the book, I'm not an accident. I'm here on purpose. I, I'm, I'm not the offspring of evolution. God has decided to breathe into me, and God has made me. That means I have a destiny. Woo. I'm going to just read two more scriptures, okay? Psalms chapter 8, verse 3. You can turn there. If not, I'll just read. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, the son of man that thou visitest him, thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Now we can talk, Brother Bernard, because that's a debatable scripture. Because according to the scripture, in Genesis 1, 1, it says, In the beginning, Elohim. In this scripture, it says, Thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim. You're closer to God than you think you are. You weren't made just a little lower than the angels. God made you just a little lower than himself. In fact, God made mankind as close to himself as he could get him without making another God. Now, now we'll talk about that later. Okay? Said, I was made him a little lower than the angels, crowned him with glory and honor, and made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, has put all things under his feet. Now let's go just a little further, and then I'll come back to it, okay? Proverbs chapter 4. I'm sorry to make you stand so long, but I'm going to preach long. Get wisdom, verse 5. Get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Ten times in five verses, or four verses, understanding is listed in the female gender now I don't want to hurt you ladies and it ain't got talking nothing about a girl but understanding is listed in the feminine gender for one reason 
Understanding alone can produce fruitfulness. Understanding can take you from barrenness to fullness. That's why understanding is called a her and a she. So much for homosexuality. Pardon me, was it something I said? I want one more verse of scripture. I'm sorry to keep you so long. Psalms 119 and verse 144. The, righteous, the righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Here's what I want to talk about. Give me understanding and I shall live. Father, bless the ministry of the word. Help me to preach like a house of fire. I'm not here to impress nobody. I was a good preacher when I got here. I'll be a good preacher when I leave. I'm a good preacher because you're a good God. And you've called me with a great calling. And your goodness is in my life. And your word and your gospel is good. So if I'm any part of that, I'm good. Not in myself, but because of what you've done for me. These are great people I'm preaching to. They're great because they have a great gospel and a great calling and a great Holy Ghost and a great destiny and a great touch of God. Bless us together now. Let me expand the horizons of their mind. For a few moments, anoint my mouth and my mind that I could impact not only this group, but this district and this movement. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody said amen. Clap your hands. And shout with the voice of triumph. Oh, hallelujah! Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can be seated. Thank you so much. I'm going to talk to you about the, 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 the awesome power of real understanding. I've preached all over this movement for a long, long time, and yet this is again what God has said. No, tell the people that if they get anything in their life, get understanding. He doesn't mind you shouting as long as you understand why you're shouting. If you just shout because they're hitting the guitar and they're hitting the drums and they're whacking on the thing, after a while when all hell breaks loose, you won't have no victory. But if you shout because I know my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, if I shout because I know no weapon formed against me shall prosper, if I praise and worship God because I know and understand that God inhabits the praises of his people, if I bless God and worship God, not because of the music and not even because of what I feel, but because I understand nothing can separate me from the love of God. I understand that I'm more than a conqueror through him who loved me and gave his life to me. Oh, yes, he did. I know what the scripture said. said he gave his life for us. That's right. But I quoted it. He gave his life to me because after he gave his life for me, then he gave his life to me. That's what makes the difference between denominal Christianity and apostolic Pentecostals. They believe he gave his life for them, but he didn't give his life to them. We believe he gave his life for us that he might give his life to us. That's the power of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I got to expand your mind now, and please don't get offended, but you need to just learn for a few minutes. Now, now I don't want to hurt you because I'm just your guest. P please don't get offended. Don't watch these guys. No, don't watch these guys. These guys run the district, they got a lot of stuff to take care of. I'm running this service. You watch me. If they jump up, whistle. If they don't, don't worry about it. They got a lot of stuff on their mind. I ain't got nothing on my mind but the betterment of your soul, the kingdom of God, and the work of the Holy Ghost. Don't. You got to forgive me. I need therapy. I need help. 
I ain't got over being saved yet. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, when I understand if it had not been for the grace of God, I'd be lost. I'd be in a devil's hell. But God, who is rich in mercy, snatched me out. I didn't join the church. Jesus drew me to himself. Don't tell me I ain't got a right to shout. Don't tell me I can't make some noise. Please be seated. I, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but, but I'm going to mess with you. You know, you didn't just start with God when you started coming to church. Now, most of you, you young people, you don't know what I'm talking about. But us old codgers, we were sitting in honky-tonks. We were sitting in bars and grills. You don't know what that is. You'll have to read a book about it. But I, I'm going to tell you something. Those of us who are sitting in the bars, let me tell you something. When I sat down on that bar, some mercy angel of God sat down right next to me. And when hell wanted to take me out, when the devil wanted to kill me with drunkenness and stupidness, God turned around and said, no, you can't have him. I got to work for him to do. We're not here because we're anything. We're here because he's something. Oh, hallelujah. So please, please be seated. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to behave myself, but I'm about ready to flip out, Bishop. I really am. I'm about, I'm about ready to go absolutely crazy. I could preach this at a general conference, but I'm not asked. So I'll preach to this conference here. You got to understand something. If you can get a new dose of understanding, it won't matter what kind of hell happens to you, what kind of trouble happens to you. It won't matter if you go in the lion's den, you go in the fiery furnace, or you get put on the Isle of Patmos. Because God said, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you, and I'll never put on you more than you're able to bear. If you have that understanding, it sets you free. Oh, glory. Woo! Oh, glory. What, can, can I just talk for a few minutes? You, you little darlings, you look so pretty with your little ties and your nice little black. I, I really appreciate the way you're singing. You didn't notice the way you were singing. You just do this. You go. I watched your guitar player a minute ago. Excuse me for picking on you. Your guitar player, he wasn't playing. He was doing this. Your organ player was. Isn't it funny, all our folks that play all that stuff, man, we don't think anything wrong with it. Now when the preacher gets ready to preach to you. We don't need to do an impersonation of Mount Rushmore. We need to get whacked out. We need to. We need to bless God and get excited. Because it's not by might, and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. You've got to understand, nothing can beat you if you live in God. Be before you're seated, I can't, this reminds me of my younger days in police lineups. I can't hardly see you. Before you're seated, look left or right and say, hell wants you, baby. But God said he can't have you. Once you get that understanding, you'll understand you're something. I'm not talking about cockiness and ego and arrogancy. I'm just talking about divine destiny. Let me try it again. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. You're not an accident. You're not a cosmic mistake. You're not the offspring of an explosion. The mighty hand of God stretched down and drew you out and put into you the very breath of life itself. You, 
can, be, you can be seated. I'm sorry, didn't mean to wake up everybody up at one time. See, you don't understand who you're sitting next to. You think it's just Susie or Carol or Bill or Joe or Freddie or Carl. Oh, no. You're sitting next to a, an unexploded divine, which in the Greek means. See, right now, right now, the dynamic of God is inside you. And while hell tries to mess with your mind and your emotions and talk about your family and stuff, your own failures, your shortcomings, your bad mistakes, stuff that you messed up, you've got to shake yourself and say, hey, Jesus, come on, come up here. Take over this life. Cleanse my mind. Wash me in the blood. Let me become something for you. Sit, sit, sit down just a second. <laughs> you, got, you got to get this. You got, I, I, I know, Brother Gurley, you got a baptized brain like the bishop, but, but I, I'm, I'm going to break it down so even a college graduate could understand what a human being is. You ready? Here. You're God's stuff. I know that's not impressive, but buddy, it is to me. With all the junk that's going on and all the technological stuff and all the computer chips and all this and all that, going to Mars and the moon, coming back, doing bisections, dissections, operations, piddly old little me, I'm, and God just steps up and says, oh, by the way, forget the whole world. You're my stuff. You're the stuff. You're the clay from the Creator. You're the dust for deity. You're the raw material that God is going to transform this world through. I, 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 I don't know whether you're hearing what I'm saying. So some of you folks that don't worship so good, let me help you with this. Don't you know who Satan is? Satan is a former employee who got fired for non-performance. And we got his job. That's why he hates worship. That's why he hates praise. Because we got his job. Make a joyful noise. All your lands, serve the Lord with gladness. You, you be see, I'm just trying to expand your understanding. See, we think it's just hickam a hokey, fishbone choky. We think it's just, we think it, no, you don't get it. You see, Jesus said to Peter in Luke 22, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have thee, that he might sift thee as wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith would fail not. Now, you got to understand what that means. He said to this guy who's a curser, loses his temper, gets ticked off, lies about Jesus. I never saw the man in my life trying to save his little ignorant carcass, cutting off people's ears in the garden. Jesus said, I prayed for you because I see all that trash coming down the pike, but I want you to know my grace is greater than your disgrace. I want you to know my mercy will take care of every one of your mistakes. That's not a license to be ungodly, but it is an ample test to be excited about the fact that God loves me. Uh, are, are you ready for your, for your class right now? You ready? Here's the understanding. When he said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired thee to have thee, that he might sift thee as wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith fails not. And when you converted, strengthen the brethren. Watch what he just said. Two worlds want you, Pete. See, you, 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 you got too much college in you. Let, let's take it out a little bit. Let, let me bring it down to sixth grade. Two worlds want you. Now, let me bring it down to the second grade. Two worlds want you. You know why? 
because the issue is not where you are and where you came from and what you become the issue is what you're fixing to become the issue is where you're going. The issue is what you're going to do to this world once you understand that God is inside me and I have a divine appointment with my own destiny. Don't accept who and what you are as the culmination and the climax of everything. You're in a journey. That doesn't do for you what it does for me. God, God can't, Brother Gurley, God wants me. <laughs> Used to be a whoremonger, a drunk, packed a gun, robbed places. Mahaney ain't the only guy that's been in jail. I've been there lots of times. I just don't blow up about it. I'm like Johnny Cash. Hell raising, honky tonking, stealing, doing all kinds of stupid stuff. And God looks down and goes, uh, not you, no, not you, no, I don't want your father, I don't want your mother, your two brothers, uh, I'll take you. Now you got to understand this, that God sovereignly just went, you. And hell goes, what? The guy's immoral, he's vile, he's trashy, he's dishonest, he curses like a trooper, he couldn't tell the truth, well, you want him? Yeah, not only do I want him, I'm going to let him replace you. I'm about ready to go crazy right now. Yeah, please be seated. I'm sorry. I'm messing up a great message here, just trying to talk. You, you, has anybody besides me in the house ever been fired? No, for those of you that have education, let go, dismissed. Could I get a hand somewhere in the house? If you up here, ever been fired, let go, dismissed? You know what the worst thing about being fired is? Not, the, hold on, Superman, right. Well, you, you, know what, you know what the worst thing about being fired is? Being replaced by an inferior. Here you are doing your job. Here you are doing everything you can. And the employer hires somebody who's half the person you were. When hell sees God raise you up in his place and makes you a praiser and makes you a worshiper and makes you a lover of God, it drives him absolutely crazy to think that he was the highest of God's creation and he got replaced by dust. You know what dust is, Bishop? Next to nothing. God says, I'm going to take stuff that's next to nothing. And when I get finished with them, they'll worship better than you. They'll sing better than you. They'll love me better. They'll be so full of joy. Am I making sense yet? Now, now look over your shoulder, left or right, to someone said, somebody ain't been doing nothing, said, and what's your problem? Do you actually think you get points for sitting on your rear end around here doing nothing? Pardon me, was it something I said? Don't you understand? Do you think I'm kidding you? If I was sitting out there... If I was sitting next to somebody who was just kind of checking their socks and sitting around and working in their date book and their day timer, I'd get out. You know why? Because the potentate's on the prowl. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout all the earth, beholding the good and the evil, to show himself strong in behalf of them whose hearts is perfect. Touch. I am persuaded that God is on the prowl, looking to bless, looking to heal, looking to save. I don't want nothing between me and God. I don't want some carnal idiot. I don't want some worldly saint. I don't want some satisfied believer. I want to sit next to somebody who's like Bartimaeus, who's desperate, who's hungry, who's crying, who's thirsty. Hey, Jesus! Let me get to my message. 
I'm not trying to be rude. Really, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm just trying to help you. Because when the scripture says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? What is man? I told you he's God's stuff. He's the potter's clay. He's the deity's dust. He's the creator's child. He's the divine offspring. He's the potentate's purpose. You ready for this? He's the maker's mirror. You see, when he made Adam and breathed into Adam the breath of lives, the scripture says Adam just woke up and said, hi, dad. And he said, hi, son. You got to hear me. When man was not in sin and was in unity with the purpose and presence and power of God, he was so much like God, he was not uncomfortable talking to him. The thing that makes you uncomfortable with God is when you commit sin or you get carnal or you get ungodly or you get worldly, and all of a sudden God makes you feel uncomfortable. See, see now, 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 now you examine this one for me, Bishop. You ready? There's no such thing in deity as distance. Nothing. No, 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 we just debate that later. There's nothing. When the Bible says, oh, why art thou far from me? Be not far from me, O Lord. Why art thou far? Listen, there's no such thing as distance or geography in God. He fills all time and space. There's no more God here than there is there. Uh, you, you, you're not hearing me yet. <laughs> Remember when Paul said to the Athenians, in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Have you ever noticed, Brother Gurley, he didn't say, in him we Pentecostals move. He was talking to pagans and whoremongers and idolaters. Why? Because a Pentecostal is no closer to God than a lost person is closer to God. The only difference is when you get saved, you get a manifestation of the presence of God. The sinner doesn't have a sinner doesn't have the manifestation of God. That's what makes it blessed to be a child of God. God shows up, God shows off, and God shows out. So, so sit down and just say, let, let me try. Watch. <laughs> oh God. When Solomon built the temple and was going to try to get God confined to this little box that he made. Then Solomon gets a brainstorm and he starts praying. He says, and thou, O Lord, wilt thou indeed dwell in this little box? Now I'm paraphrasing. This little box that I built for you, here it is. Seeing that the heaven, plural, and the heaven of heavens, plural, cannot contain thee. Now you gotta get understanding. Nothing can contain God. God contains the universe. I'm going to go a little further, brethren. God is not immense, like I've heard some nincompoop preachers preach. God is not immense, because immense is a terminology for size. And God is not big. God is infinite. You ready? From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. And the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. So if I'm going through some hell, he's there. If I'm in a sick bed, he's there. If I'm in a jail or prison, he's there. If I've committed sin and failed God, he's even there also. Excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt you with great thoughts. Let me try it again. There's no such thing as distance with deity. When the scripture bishop says, be not far from me, what, here we go, what he is saying is, distance only occurs in your emotions when there's an area in your life that's unlike God. As soon as I practice stuff that is dissimilar to him, and unlike him, there is a sense of distance created. But the minute I repent, <laughs> said, you called? You knocked? Did you cry? Did you say, help? Did I hear somebody? Doesn't it blow your socks off? 
that they put John on that cemetery plot called the Isle of Patmos? It blows my mind. No choir, no district, no fellow believers, no Jeff Arnold tapes. And yet he says, and I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I'd like to know how you could do that without all this stuff. Real easy when you understand that he's not far from every one of us. He is not far. There is no distance. All you've got to do is repent. All you've got to do is begin to praise God. All you've got to do is start asking God, and God will help you. Now, I don't want to be offensive, brethren. I don't want to be offensive, sisterin. Oh, you got me? Watch. I don't want to hurt you. But I want to correct something for understanding's sake. There is no such thing as nothing. Don't look over there. Look over here. Now, I know what we mean when we say nothing and use the terminology nothing. But if God fills all time and space, there can't be a place called nothing. Listen to me. Nothing, here we go, is simply something that has not yet been manifested. I've heard these preachers for 40 years tell me, and God took nothing, and he made the cosmos. Oh, shut up, stupid. How could he get nothing? He had to go outside of himself to find it. Now, you're not hearing me yet. From everlasting to everlasting. Where would God find nothing? Being that God is something, and his something fills all time and space. Where's he going? That's like those dumb Russians that finally went in outer space and landed on the moon and said, we haven't found God. And I see God saying, I was waiting on you. You can't, listen, you can't get into a bunch of hell and loneliness and trouble and problems that God hasn't been putting nickels in the way, in the in parking meter waiting on you to show up. I don't want to hurt your feelings, Texas, but God is never coming and going. I know what the Scripture says. Well, the Spirit of the Lord moved and the Spirit of the Lord fell and the Spirit of the Lord departed. you got to understand something. See if I'm telling you right. Anthropomorphism anthropomorphic big college term simply means that god uses human terminology to relate to us because he's other than us so when the lord says stuff in anthropomorphic terms like and the lord ran spirits don't run and the eyes of the lord run too you ever see two eyeballs running anywhere See, that's as dumb as these people that believe there's more than one God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. If that is true, then God can't do nothing because he's got somebody standing on his hand. Pardon me, am I messing with your little theology here? Don't you understand? There's no such thing as nothing. Watch, watch. When God decided to make the cosmos, the universe, the material world, where did he get the material from? He reached inside of himself and brought that stuff that we saw as nothing, he brought something out of his mouth. And when it crossed his lips, that which appeared to be nothing now became material. I'm going to go a little further, Bishop. If God wanted to lie, and he don't, and God could lie, and he can't, but if he did, the minute it crossed his mouth, the lie would be truth. You're not getting it yet. He reached inside of himself, pulled out the material world, put this dust on the ground, and just started forming this guy. Now, you may not believe this, but I believe it, and I've got the mic. The man looked exactly like Jesus. Because the Bible said in Romans 5, he was made in the image and likeness of him that was to come. One was the type and the other was the prototype. Jesus and Adam looked like twins. When God made Adam, he made him in the image and likeness of he that was coming. 
He made him exactly like he himself would look. And he gave him the authority and the power to do everything he would do. He gave him dominion over the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, the critters in the forest. He had so much authority, if he would have just opened his little milk toast mouth, when his wife sat there and did that stupid stuff and listened to that snake, read your scriptures. Adam apparently was standing right next to Eve when that dirt bag told her God was lying. And Adam kept his mouth shut. Let me give you some understanding. Our problem is not TV. It's not video. It's not worldly sports. It's men who keep their mouth shut when they ought to talk. It's fathers who don't lead their family. It's preachers who don't lead their churches. Excuse me, Rev. Bunch of milk toast things. Well, honey, are we going to church tonight? Well, I've got to wash the car. Oh, I'd like to slap the snot right at you. You're supposed to be the priest of the family. Why, you little wussy, you need to get saved. Now, wait a minute. That's why I said our problem, listen to me. If you read 1 Timothy, when Paul writes to Timothy and he says, we got two issues at hand. I would that women would dress in modest apparel. That's what he says. But wait a minute. He predicates modest apparel of women upon worshiping men. Why should your wife try to be modest and you sit there in your fat backside and never worship? If men would start worshiping in our churches, it would put a covering over our women, and it, and it would not let them be frustrated. It ain't hard for a man to be modest. He wears britches. It's harder for a woman to be modest in a world that doesn't believe in modesty. But if she had a husband that wept and prayed and cried, if she had a husband that talked in tongues, she had a husband that led in praise and worship, she would follow him. Please be seated. I'm, I'm trying to get to my message here. I don't want to hurt your feelings. Please don't get offended at me. I'm just visiting. I'll be out of here Friday, okay? Look, when I say there's no such thing as a move of God, now that kills us because we say, oh, we had a move of God. Now, I know what you mean when you say we had a move of God. What you say is, God just showed up and went boing. And you went. And you said, whoo, do we have a move of God. But I got news for you. God can't move. I'll show you why. If you fill this bottle full to the top of water, the water can't go nowhere. It can't move. It has no room to move. Let me try it again. He fills from everlasting to everlasting. If God's going to move, where's he going? You're not hearing me yet. Look. <laughs> Boy, you got too much education. You need to listen to me. Look. When I want to move from point A to point B, I just leave point A and I show up at point B. God's got a problem. When he's in point A and decides to bless in point B, he blesses in point B. He ain't left point A. He just manifests himself at point B. See, when you say God's moved, what you're saying is God has manifested himself. 
And that's why you can't have church that'll give you understanding and victory if you had church where God doesn't shake a window, knock over a table, mess up your hair. When you say, move on me, Lord, you're asking him, manifest yourself. Come on, I've been in, I've been in restaurants talking to preachers and talking to saints just visiting and start talking about the presence of God and all of a sudden poof, arm hair stand up my hair stands up in the back of hey come on, hoo, he, ha, ha, hoo, he, ha. whoa I feel God in this place he was in that place before I got there you know him he ain't trying to chase you down i-75 to find out where you're eating he's sitting in the booth before your ignorant carcass ever got there it's when you begin to bless him and exalt him and talk about him and magnify him that he starts manifesting himself i'm gonna say it again that's why you don't want to sit next to somebody that doesn't praise God. I'm going to go a little further. I can't hardly see all you statues over there, but I don't see no hands wiggling. There's one I see. Let me tell you something. God ain't about to climb over three duds to get to you. Water moves at the least resistance. Wind moves at the least resistance. The Holy Ghost moves or manifests itself at the least resistance. But if you get someone over here saying hallelujah, and you get someone over here saying praise God, you have just made a choir for fire. That's why the book says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Not just at church, not just when I got the job, not just when I got enough money, all times. And sometimes when all hell's breaking loose and you bless God, that becomes a sacrifice of praise. Can I preach just a few more minutes? You know, folks, I don't want to hurt your feelings. But if I was facing some of the devils you poor slobs are facing, when this light turns out and this door opens up, your carcass hits the street, hell's are waiting on you. You, you. you need to get inebriated while you're here. You need to get intoxicated while you're here. You need to fall out of love with your image and fall in love with him so that when you walk out stupefied, now, you, you, you folks have been saved too long. You don't understand. I'm an ex-whoremonger. I'm an ex-drunk. I, I know it's hard for you girls to believe, but I'll show you a picture when I was 22. Pretty. Oh. Muscular, wavy head, dimples. Give me a break. Walking into bars, get ready to honky-tonk and... Hey, you folks ain't taught me nothing about dancing. I could outdance you when I was hell raising. Man, I could make up steps. Some of you folks just kind of trying to follow. Oh, my God, make up a step. Ain't nobody interested in you anyway. I, I hate to hurt your feelings, Bishop. I know you was born and raised in the church and came out of your mother's womb with the Holy Ghost. I understand all that. But I didn't. I come out of hell holes and honky tonks and bars and grills and gang fights and jails and man I'm so thrilled to be here I ain't got over it yet if there's somebody in this building that has no right to be here you're looking at him I have no I have no right to be here but God who is rich in mercy said I could be a part of the team We don't deserve anything. God just lets us be on the team. Please be seated. I'm, I'm going as fast as I can. You got to understand something. I, I may not finish this message. I'll, I'll just say something to you, okay? Now, don't do this. Don't do this. This is rated X. Don't do this. 
But, but when I was out, fat cat did slipping in the slide, moving in the groove. Walk into the bar. Look at some of the babes. Just kind of go, mm. Ooh, they could turn the lights down here. Mm. Wait a minute. Until I started drinking. Hubba, hubba, that ain't no blubber. That's all meat and potatoes, yeah. Drink a little more. You want to dance? You, you want to go for a ride? Now, you're laughing because, see, you're all, you're, you came out of your mother's womb with the Holy Ghost, but not me. You know what they call this, Bishop? Don't get embarrassed. You know what they call this? If it's a whiskey bottle, they call what's in here spirits. More spirits, more crazy. Give me that mic, I'll sing. That first time you looked at that babe, it looked like witch hazel with a hangover. Five beers later and three shots of Jack Daniels look like Cinderella and his mother. Now, you're laughing because you don't know what I'm talking about. Let me tell you something. The problem in Pentecost, I don't want to hurt your feelings. It ain't TV. It ain't video. It ain't putt-putt golf. The problem in Pentecost is we're too sober. As long as you stay sober, you criticize everything. You damn and condemn everything. But if you get intoxicated on the Holy Ghost, if you, if you get full of the power of God, the love of God will flow out of you. You will show mercy, toleration, care. We need to get another drink at Joel's place. I, I, I just got a few more minutes. Just bear with me. You got to understand something. I'm talking about getting understanding. You got to get some understanding. I pastor a fine church, but a fine church is filled with dingalings and wackos and loonies. There's no such church that doesn't have trouble. That's the one that's in the grave. I mean, we shout and talk in tongues and boogaloo and carry on. I'll be honest with you, brethren. I can't believe anybody could go to hell under my ministry. I just can't believe it. I'll become everything to all men to win. I cannot believe that people backslide in my church. I can't believe that young girls get pregnant. I can't believe that I just went through three divorces. I can't believe that stuff. We shout and talk in tongues and boogaloo and run, and then by Monday and Tuesday, it's like they never went to church. Because they don't understand. What don't they understand? God's for me. And, and, and if God's for me, what does it matter who or what's against me? Now, I know that seems so elementary, but let me try it again. God's for me. Are you ready for this? I got a God that's in love with me. How about you? <laughs> I mean, I got a king that's in love with me. I got a Jewish boyfriend that's fixing to come back for me and take me to his place. Give, 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 give me just a few more minutes and I'll just, I'll just stop where I am. Don't you get it? What is man that you're mindful of him? Listen to me. Mankind became the visible manifestation of the invisible God. Now, if you can accept this, fine. If you can't, tough. When Jesus stepped on that cloud and left, you ready? You became his replacement body. What are you afraid of? Why don't you pray for more people? 
Well, suppose they die. Next. I pray for people that don't get the Holy Ghost. You know what I do? Next. I pray for people that don't get touched by God. What do I do? Next. Why? When he stepped on that cloud and left, he put the same Holy Ghost that was in him inside me, and now I am his legal representative. I am his body, his temple, his bride. I am his church. I am his representative. Without me, he doesn't have a legal representative. Have I lost you? We're still okay? I'm just checking because this education stuff scares me. You got to hear me. Mankind, you got to get this. Watch. Thoughts are yours until they're fleshed or verbalized. You got to get this. Adam became God's thoughts, just like Jesus became God's thoughts. Words are thoughts manifested. Jesus was the Word manifested. Remember, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, not them. Them didn't come to 325 A.D. All things were made by Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now there was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That's the true light that lighteth every man. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, that of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. No man has seen God at any time, but the Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has exegesis him. He has manifested him so that when you see Jesus, you've seen God himself. And so when the world sees the church, it ought to see a manifestation of God himself. Can, can I preach just a few more minutes? A few more minutes. Just please be seated. I'm, I, I'm going way out here, okay? You, just I want you to understand, you're not a cosmic accident. There wasn't a big bang and you showed up. There wasn't this massive explosion and everything was just perfect. That's the dumbest thing there ever was. You're not evolution. You're not ex-slime that slithered out on the beach and all of a sudden you turned into something beautiful. That's as dumb as it can be. No, you got to hear me. When you look in a mirror, you get up in the morning, go to bed tonight, look in the mirror, do like I do. Hey, 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 God lives in that guy. No, you, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. You know when I got up this morning in Florida and started praying, you know what I said? I prayed for a while, and then I stopped and said, excuse me. Hey, hell. I'm up today, you're going to have a bad day. You're not hearing me. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you're hell's worst nightmare. You just don't understand who you are, who's inside of you, how much authority you have, and what your job description is. Please be seated. Have you ever noticed that when Jesus walked into a place, hell kind of said, Brother Chance, oh, no. See, that's what my book out there, Power Encounters, you ought to buy 10,000 of them. It's great stuff power encounters. Isn't it funny? Jesus never met a disease, a devil, or death that he liked, and we tolerate them all. When he met sick people, he said, I'm going to fix this. When he met demonized people, he said, you've got to go. Now watch, the weaker kingdom leaves. There's no debate. Hell don't fuss and cuss and say, hey, you ain't going to make. He said, I said, go. 
The original streaker in the Bible who wear no clothes had 2,000 plus demons in him, and Jesus just said one word to him, go. There was no debate. Every time Jesus showed up, there was a clash between two kingdoms. It was a power encounter. Don't you get it? You've got Jesus Christ inside of you right now. If you would not be afraid to demonstrate and declare and try, you'd be surprised how many miracles would start happening in your life. Stop being held hostage by what you feel and what you don't feel. Get a hold of what you know and what you understand. I'm sorry to mess with you. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll be retired by Friday. I'll be okay. Don't you get it? Don't you get what Adam was? Adam was the only link between two worlds. Earth was his mama. God was his daddy. Don't you get it? Church is your mama. God's your daddy. Don't you get it? You're the link between two worlds. He doesn't talk with giraffes to evangelize people. He doesn't send any messages to roaches and porpoises. And he, he's waiting for these Looney Tunes called man who can't figure out what he's supposed to do. I just don't understand. What don't you understand? Don't you get it? When Jesus was raised from the dead and stepped on that cloud as he left, like Elijah left, for Elisha, he threw back a mantle and said, you're in charge. Take care of Dodge City till I get back. Represent me real good, will you? And if you don't have miracle signs and wonders, you're not representing me very well. I'm going to try it again. Brethren, if we don't have signs and wonders and miracles, we are not preaching the gospel of good news. We are preaching the gospel of good advice. The world doesn't need good advice. The world needs good news. And the good news is mercy is available. The Holy Ghost is available. Healing is available. Whosoever will, let him come. I, 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 I don't have time to get to what I was trying to say. Let, let me just let me just paraphrase and just prostitute the whole thing for five minutes. Okay, sit down. Watch. When God made man, he made him in his own image and his own likeness. He had authority and dominion. It was given to him. He prostituted it and forfeited it by sin. Am I right? He lost his dominion and his and his authority. He lost it. Satan's got it now. So what does Jesus do? Jesus comes to recover and rescue what that lunatic lost. You got to hear me. God cannot take unfair advantage of Satan. He can't slap the snot out of him and say, uh, my boy Adam didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. Give him back the territory. Give him back the authority. No, no. See, the Bible says the judge of the earth shall do right. God is bound by his own judicial legislation. He must do right. So Satan uses that against him. So once Adam committed high treason, he delivered what was given to him by God into the power of Satan. What? Oh. Listen to me. I don't care whether you believe it or not. I'm telling you the truth. When Adam committed sin, he was the first man born again. He was born again the wrong way. He was born from life to death. He was born from light to darkness. He was born from truth to error. And Satan now ruled him. And he received the nature of this dirty rebel. He's got no way to come back to God unless God reaches for him. So God wants to emancipate him and set him free. But he can't take advantage of the devil. So watch what God does. He decides to invade the earth as one cell, swimming up inside the body of a little Hebrew girl. And God becomes what he never was, flesh. Now you, you gotta, I don't want this being rated X, but you got to hear me. You better believe in the virgin birth. If you don't believe in the virgin birth, 
you don't have any salvation because everybody's a sinner and a sinner can't die for a sinner and the sinner needs somebody who doesn't have sin and God can't die for Adam and Adam's seed why because God ain't got no blood God is spirit and only blood remits sin so God says I can fix that I'll just make me some blood and I'll make me a body now you got to hear me Joe oh God Joseph did not have sexual relations with Mary if he does she's gonna birth a sinner because the blood comes from the sperm and seed of the male it fertilizes the woman she doesn't give the baby blood the father gives the baby blood guess who overshadowed Mary the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary and the blood that's produced is the blood of God himself without sin give me five minutes and so when Jesus comes out of that virgin birth now I know you may not believe that or you disagree with it but you can be wrong on a lot of things listen to me Jesus has got hey listen girly look over here you politician Jesus has got to be born of a virgin he can't just appear because the book of Job says these words the womb of the woman is the doors of life what does that mean legal entrance remember anybody that comes here that's not born here doesn't have a right to exercise authority they may have power like a gun to hold up a bank but they don't have any right to do it Jesus comes and he's born of a virgin out of a virgin's womb up steps Jesus who is God manifest in the flesh and when he bumps into the devil the devil says what are you doing here watch what he says oh I was born here hell says "Uh oh now I've got not only a power against me I've got a legal attorney against me you see he's not allowed to, you're not hearing me he's not allowed to conduct business here with the children of God he is an alien invader he is a trespasser he has no right over any child of God's life now he's ruling over sinners because they're his servants and he's their God but once you're born again of water and spirit he has no claim on you he has no right on you he is not allowed to put stuff on you he can't do it because you are born of water and spirit your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life you've got power and authority over him listen to me I'm trying to close when man committed sin remember man is tripart first Thessalonians 5 23 body soul spirit he's not three God he's not three beings any more than God is three beings he's body soul and spirit one man he's father son Holy Ghost one God that's dumb because man is made in the image of God and God ain't three and man ain't three now watch your salvation has got to affect all three aspects of your life body soul and spirit we preach a gospel that only has to do with forgiveness of sins. What about healing the sick? What about casting out devils? What about taking care of emo emotional ruptures and inner problems and healings that need to be done? All that stuff was purchased for us. There's more to the gospel, ladies and gentlemen, than Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38 just gives you an entrance into the kingdom. But once you're into the kingdom, you have certain birthrights that have been given to you. You can use the blood. You can use the name. You can use the word. Angels do battle for you. <laughs> Hear me, please. Man is tripart. I'm almost done. Man is tripart. Body, soul, and spirit. You got to get this. His body's got five laboratory assistants. They are his senses. They make him contact the material world. That's what's happened in Pentecost. We're trying to contact the spirit world with our bodies. And if we don't do it with our bodies, we do it with our souls, emotion, will, and intellect. But your body makes you world conscious. Your soul makes you self-conscious. Your spirit makes you God-conscious. But when Adam sinned, he died. 
But he didn't die 900 plus years before he ever died, but his spirit died. So now, watch, he has no way to make contact with God because his spirit gives him God consciousness. But when he committed sin, he has no consciousness towards God except fear. If I can say this simply, the light went out. Remember? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. What does that mean? Watch. In him was life, and the life was the God consciousness of men. But when the light went out, idolatry was birthed. Why? Hosea 13 and 2. They make idols and gods according to their own understanding. Ephesians 4, 17 and 18. Don't be like these Gentiles. Watch. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. He says, that's why Paul writes to the Ephesians church, that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. So when God gives you repentance and remission of sins through baptism and fills you with the Holy Ghost, He turns the light back on. And now you have a God consciousness. Come on, stand with me. I, I don't want to preach much longer. I, I, I think I've bored you half to death here. I'm, I'm trying to expand your understanding. Your under, if you can get a Holy Ghost spirit, I'm not talking about... I'm not against that, but ain't going to get it. You've got to get spiritual understanding. It's the greatest thing God can give you outside of the Holy Ghost is to have spiritual, godly, holy understanding. Why? Because if you have understanding about spiritual things, understanding about destiny things, understanding about how valuable and precious and how much worth you possess to God, you would not prostitute your life on stupid stuff and dumb stuff and self-indulgence. In fact, some of you saints that here that have been in church longer than Moses has been dead. Some of you folks need to get a new understanding that you don't get anything from God just because you're here in longevity. There needs to be a refreshing and a renewing in, in senior saints, in, in backbone people. Now, I don't know how else to do this. I'd like just to pray. In fact, I'd like to open the altar. If you need the Holy Ghost, God will give it to you in five seconds. All you got to do is repent. If you repent of your sins and ask God to forgive you. But you know what I'd like? I'd like for this, if you don't mind, Bishop, this district, this camp meeting, I'd like for us to gather around the altar and repent of our lack of understanding. That's all. Not worldliness, not whoremongering, not... Listen, the devil's not going to get 95% of us to do a bunch of stupid stuff. But if he can keep us in the dark about what's our purpose, how much power do we have? Do we really have authority from Jesus? Can we really do the works of the Spirit if we're in union and aligned with the head? Remember, we're the body, he's the head. All Satan's got to do is interrupt the flow between the head and the body, and the body doesn't function. Are you ready? Come on. Who, whoever will. I'm not going to beg anybody. I'd like you to stand up here. We're going to pray a corporate prayer. Now, if you, need, if you need something from God, forgiveness, mercy, whatever it is, uh, excuse me, Bishop, I, 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 I went way out here trying to get us to understand. If you would just ask God, to fill you with fresh Holy Ghost understanding. That doesn't mean you grasp everything. It just means you have a clearer concept and understanding of what you've been called to do. If you've made some mistakes, if you've done some stupid things in your life, fine, let me give you some understanding. If you'll ask for forgiveness, if you'll apologize to God, if you'll ask for mercy, He'll give it to you right now. You don't have to beg God one iota. He'll give it to you right now. If you're filled with fear or anxiety or worry or apprehension, 
then you need understanding that God has not given to us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I, I, I hope I'm not belaboring this thing right now. Come on, pray, would you? The best way you know how to pray. Ask God to, to baptize you with understanding. You couldn't even receive the gift of the Holy Ghost till somehow God gave you a little bit of understanding. You couldn't even repent of your sins until God helped you realize that He loved you and cared about you. He's not, he's not on your case. He's not your enemy. He doesn't hate your guts. He doesn't want you to go to a devil's hell. That's why I got that book out there. Hell's reserved for idiots. Because only idiots go to hell. Because God has done everything in His power to make sure we don't go. But you've got to get understanding. You are God's replacement body. You've got to see yourself as equipped by God's anointing. And then you've got to see and understand, I am to enforce the kingdom. And I am to express the kingdom wherever I go. Come on, let's, let's pray. Let's worship. Let's pray. You want to sing? Go ahead. I don't care. Sing. With all you're getting, get understanding. With all you're getting, get understanding. You're the one Hallelujah. I 